you're at Hoteking Hotel Keys and Point of Sale System. Sweet, thank you, man. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> you guys see the slides all good and everybody hear me good? Perfect, perfect. So, uh, Weston Hecker, I'm going to be hacking Hotel Keys and Point of Sale Systems. I had backup videos just in case if anything went south, so. <laughs> so, yeah, funny story, uh, starting out a little bit. Uh, after I go through a little bit about myself, I do a lot of talks. I uh, did Hope this year, did uh, Black Hat. Uh, this is my third year at DEF CON. It's a privilege to speak here. So, yeah, basically do pen testing for a living. I uh, do a lot of research on the side. I'm an ATM enthusiast and like some of the other stuff. I just like playing around with like technology. So, and I got a couple side projects. Um, I was working on some car hacking, uh, point of sale system hacking, hotel key hacking, and uh, just exploits in uh, property management software. So, but a uh, funny story. Uh, so when you do a, a hotel hacking talk at a hotel, it usually involves the staff uh, pulling you, your PR person, and your boss aside <laughs> and taking you into the bowels of the hotel. <laughs> and I've seen Casino one too many times because I was a little nervous. And, uh, you know, so. But it was something where it, it all ended really good. They just wanted to know if they were uh, vulnerable to this attack, and it is not. Uh, they tokenize their stuff. They did it set up properly. They followed the best practices. So your guys' hotel room keys are safe uh, at all the Caesars properties. So. Just wanted to throw that in there. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to explain uh, the actual mag, uh, mag spoofer, which is Sammy Camcar's device. Uh, this one's a modified version of the mag spoofer. Uh, this one is not the one that is set up for brute forcing, uh, but I do have the demo of the actual brute forcing going on. And then we're going to actually uh, infect this point of sale system with malware <laughs> using a human interface device injection. So, and uh, yeah, I'm going to explain a little bit about the point of sale systems and the actual uh, process of how the keys are actually made. On some of them that rely on night audit and batch services, uh, they have to do some <laughs> very insecure things to make sure that their database is post and they get charged. So uh, I'm going to do a privilege, uh, show you how the privileged attacks work, uh, fireman keys, uh, service keys, things like that. So, and it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> some of it's, uh, I thought it was pretty duty heavy encryption of some kind and uh, some, most of it's just uh, encoded. So they uh, definitely skip some steps. And the point of sale talk, it's going to, uh, go from how I led from doing hotel research into actually attacking point of sale systems. Because, like, the, I don't know anybody else when they saw Sammy's video, like, they thought of every single thing that has a uh, mag strip reader on it as now an attack surface. And I just want to give him a shout out because that was a, an amazing research. And he uh, saved me many, many hours of reading manuals. So, and yeah, I'm going to basically go through how it uses the mag strip readers, uh, whether, where the fail was in that. And uh, I'm going to actually go with triggering events on the readers and see what it's listening for. Because some of the newer uh, point of sale systems, like they will only power up the reader when X happens. And uh, I actually have a tap that you can attach to uh, bypass some of that stuff. So, and I'm going to go through some of the management uh, cards, brute forcing management cards. You can actually, you know, do refunds, stuff like that. So you can actually refund to other credit cards uh, using one of the other attacks. So, or yeah, I was, it was one of that I was conceptually doing, and it, was, uh, it would have been a pretty decent attack, because I never knew that you could actually refund to a credit card that it wasn't originally charged on. And that's something I came across while doing some of the other research I was doing this year. So, And yeah, so I'm going to do a cache tend, check tend attack. So that basically, uh, when you inject the F8 key, it literally just pops the register open. And I'm going to go over that in a little bit here. So, Because <laughs> everybody pays a check still, right? So yeah. <laughs> and uh, attacking OS injection, I'm going to do a pop a command shell. And then I'm also going to demo a drive-by attack as long as the 4G holds up. So and I might have to get Steve Jobs on you guys, have you turn your phones off. But <laughs> no, it should be good. So I did have 4G working earlier. So, And uh, some of the uh, actual re restaurant attacks and other mag research, like some of the rewards programs, uh, I, I wrote a one version of it where it cycles through 10 cards. So the same with some of those places where you can collect points. They're on to employees, you know, just giving the points to themselves. So it actually cycles through like 10 accounts, and I'll go through that in a little bit here. So I'm going to go through, uh, who in the room knows what a mag spoofer is? Who's built one? They're fun. <laughs> they're, they're very fun things to build. And uh, yeah. So basically, uh, you, as you can see there, they, that's what actually happens if you put iron oxide on a credit card. It's going to actually, mag it has a little magnetic uh, field to it. So that's when the actual card is swiped through. It's actually generating a magnetic field and speaking binary data. So ones, zeros, things like that. So basically what Sammy Camcar did was he actually you know, built a version. I think the uh, patenting all goes back to like 2008 with the Loop Pay, which is a system that was bought by Samsung. And so basically, you just need, all you need to know is that there's a EM field being generated that is the same, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, some of the timing is different, uh, 
but as far as that goes, when you swipe the card, it's basically doing the exact same thing. So it's able to speak to magnetic head readers uh, using a small little uh, mag spoofer. So, and uh, how is the? Yeah, it's secure mag strip transmission. So it's like I said, it's uh, something that's been around since 2008. So back in 2002 and 1997, <laughs> you know, people didn't think that this kind of thing was possible. So that's uh, why a lot of these vulnerabilities. Um, there's no reason that this keyboard should have a <laughs> 102 key functionality that you can actually inject through the actual magnetic head reader. So, and yeah, it's not it's not RFID. Um, a lot of people ask me that, like you know, the hotel attacks. Like, is it on the RFID um, actual keys? And no, it's not. It's actually uh, basically turning a magnetic card into a wireless card. So, and yeah, how do you handle the overheating? So basically. Uh, the first thing I did after I uh, got my first mag spoofer, built it, ordered all the parts from China, waited like a week and a half, and the first thing I did was burned it out. Because <laughs> I tried uh, injecting multiple cards. I pushed like five or six cards, and uh, I did my first modification just to increase how many cards I could store on it. And then I started actually you know, seeing how many I could do, and after about 18 cards, uh, it burned out. So, <laughs> so I waited about another week for all the parts to come from China, and yeah. I basically ba made uh, six. Six mag spoofers in one uh, with a little bit of a controlled Arduino, and then it has a 3800 milliamp battery instead of a 100 milliamp. So I think it's heavy duty. I call it Big Bertha because it is just this like huge coil on an Arduino. So, and I'm going to go into a little bit of what property management software is. Uh, it's a, uh, when I refer to it from PM PMS from now on, it is not what everyone would think it was. So it is property management software. <laughs> And that is something where uh, it is actually where your folio data is. Everybody's you know seen the checkout where it says folio. That's basically where the hotel keeps all your records. Uh, it's how it actually you know what's to charge when they actually do the night audit process. So when they do run the night audit, it's going to charge under your uh, bank account. Nowadays, like uh, when they're properly proceduralized, it's something where uh, there's lots of security mechanisms that people can actually put into place. So I'm going to go into a little bit of explanation of what the actual uh, proprietary card readers and the security behind the hotel. Uh, so basically. Uh, there is your folio number. Uh, the, actually, the one that I found the weakness in was um, after I uh, unencoded the actual cards, I read it in a raw using an MSR 605, which is a magster reader. Basically, read the raw data, unencoded it, and it was literally the same as my folio number and my room number and the checkout date. So, <laughs> if you make an assumption that somebody's going to check out in the next week, uh, your space just went down a little bit. And if your hotel uses a very, uh, not very old process, actually. Um, they actually weaned away from it in 2007, 2006. So if they do incremental folios and you're in a 50 person hotel, <laughs> it's a not very big space. You have 918 options in a 50 key or a 50 person hotel. So it's something where, yeah, that's not many options to try, especially with a modified mag spoofer. You can actually inject uh, 45 cards uh, per minute. So that goes through that space pretty quick. So. And yeah, uh, collecting the information. As you can see, the also instead of injecting full credit card numbers, you're actually injecting uh, just some of the track. Most of them is the track three data, a lot of the track two data. So credit cards are broken down into track one, two, and three. Uh, track three is the one that hotel chains use mostly. So, and if you've ever noticed, you can put your card in upside down. That's because that half of the actual magnetic stripping is only used. So they only use a portion of track three. And as you can see, I put uh, iron oxide on this one also, and it just shows that it is actually not. Yeah, it's not using the full card because I covered the whole thing, then wiped it down, and yeah. So and that, and that's one of the things too. I travel a lot when I go pen testing, so I have like <laughs> an entire suitcase, not an entire suitcase full of it, but it's uh, got about three layers of uh, actual hotel room keys, and I was always wondering what was on them. So I just got bored one day and started pulling information off of them, and yeah. And there were several several of them um, that actually were you know uh, pretty easy to actually break the encoding on them because they were using uh, non. Uh, it was like I think base 64, but a little bit less because <laughs> it was <laughs> very, very simple. Uh, I wrote an actual script and then uh, most of that script actually worked for like three or four different kinds of keys. So I'm guessing that they're using the same PMS software. So, and yeah, so how do you, uh, <laughs> how would the bad guys go about uh, interacting with, uh, say, for example, if you were going to brute force that 918 space, say uh, Weston wanted to get into Hecker's room, it's, you know, now I know the folio number, I assume he's checking out in the next week. I can actually go to an elevator or the pool area, and it'll actually tell me once I get that uh, when I get valid card numbers. So you don't have to actually be sitting in front of the person's door, <laughs> which is kind of you know that would rise a lot of suspicion. You know, especially if you had to sit in front of his door for 18 minutes or something like that. So the actual, <laughs> yeah, that gets kind of creepy. The guy in the hallway for 18 minutes. So that's something where 
Yeah, the, uh, I was like one of the concepts that was, and with that was with permission on this property. It was uh, actually testing it out by the pool area and the actual uh, hotel because uh, I also found out how the floor restrictions and elevators work this way. So, <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Like if uh, somebody wants to go up to the 26th floor, you can literally just change the room number. It doesn't actually validate the folio on that. So. And yeah. And as far as getting maid service keys, um, on that property that I was on, I literally attached my device to the back of the door, and I did that from the privacy of my own room. And when people walked by, it was uh, you know, just randomly beeping here and there, but uh, it was something where it took about 33 minutes to actually get a, you know, the, the domain admin of the hotel, pretty much. It was one of the maiden keys. And you can literally want, like, it, it is crazy the amount of uh, access, especially with some of the service keys. And uh, I feel dumb for brute forcing it, because it was, uh, pretty much all zeros <laughs> for the maid's keys. <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, some of the guys out there, like, that have been right away, it's like, let's start at zero instead of, you know, the folio numbers. So it's something that once I understood that, I tried all nines, and that was the service keys. And, yeah, so. And then uh, some of the actual issuing, um, they issue them monthly. So the folio, uh, once I found out that that was the way that they were issued, it was something where I was actually, you know, pretty much able to do that, so. And yeah, and uh, a lot of the elevator and fireman keys, like there's some states that are looking at actually, uh, luckily they're hid behind metal, so there's no way people could interact with them. <laughs> you know, so that's what I'm saying, like uh, that heavy duty max spoofer, it can go a pretty good distance. So that's even if they're blocked off uh, for law enforcement or f uh, fireman usage, uh, it can actually reach some of those, so. Yeah, so the, I'm gonna go through some of the raw dumps. Uh, some of the track, uh, the other facilities, they actually use, like, say, for example, if you go to a uh, theme, theme park, they'll have on track one and track two, they'll have other information. Um, uh, track two, on some of the properties, uh, keys that I was looking at, they actually uh, basically had my name. And I was like, oh, how am I going to brute force, you know, names and stuff? And luckily, it wasn't validating it. So, and that's one of the things, too, is, like, I always wondered about that, like, how often, you know, because that's one of the things, like, uh, people always heard news stories about personal information. There's no personal information on any of the keys that I came across. Um, the ones that I could, could decode at least, uh, with the exception of like a name. Um, and yeah, that's, it, to me, that's not that identifiable, I guess, so. And uh, there are limitations to characters that can be entered um, due to the limica limitations of encoding of the keys only. Uh, once you introduce the mag spoofer, you can actually start injecting some illegal characters, <laughs> which I actually found out when uh, I was running pretty hot, like, because uh, I was actually uh, measuring like, uh, how hot it could get before it actually started uh, garbling the messages and stuff like that, and actually uh, some of the bit error percentages, like if they would go through the roof if it started overheating, and uh, you know to actually figure out what was safe to run the device at, and uh, yeah, there were some characters, uh, I'm guessing some bits flipped, and that's what led me to believe that, you know, some of the research, which I actually will be demoing at the end here. So, and with some readers, they also yeah they automatically inject a return character after the card is swiped. So after a certain amount of digits are entered, um, there is a way to actually uh, stop that automatic return character. So, and I will go, uh, that, that's with the modified version of the mag spoofer only, because uh, after it does like 46 digits, it'll do an automatic return character, so. And yeah, other than that, um, you just need to know literally the, your own folio number if you wanna, uh, when I was actually going to a, like actually uh, breaking the encoding, it was something where I actually, you know, just had to get my own key issued and stuff like that twice. And, um, yeah, then that gives you a sample to go off of, and you could pretty much, uh, other keys that are collected, you know, there's lots of them where they have the return things. I didn't get those ones, but I pretty much just got my own uh, keys, so. So breaking the complex encryption, yeah, that was pretty simple. <laughs> you know, I had to rent an Amazon server for, no. Uh, I literally just booted up my computer, uh, wrote a script to, yeah, this one was actually, <laughs> this version of it was actually just base 64 encoded, so that was, Kind of, uh, kind of irritating. I thought it was going to be a lot more harder on this one, but. <laughs> and some of the uh, kiosks, I started uh, playing around with some of that stuff. And anytime you guys go to a security conference, that's always the, you know, first thing they shut off for a good reason for this kind of stuff. So, because <laughs> uh, this is a really good way to like issue your cards. And uh, if you're the bad guy, obviously, uh, it's something where they will, you know, you're able to get like seven cards without being suspicious. So, because yeah, unless yeah, so. So what led to the research after the hotel keys? Um, that pretty much was my next step. I was thinking everything with a, um, pretty much a mag reader on it is now a target. <laughs> so, and I actually noticed that once I started buying some of these devices that they were generic HID. Re uh, HID. And I did a lot of uh, HID attacks, uh, human interface device attacks, which are basically keyboards. Um, 
with uh, TINCs and payloads in the past. So it's something where now that I was uh, looking at the attack surface of point of sale systems, it was, yeah, naturally the next step. So, so how does it use a mag interpreter? This one up here is a 102 key keyboard, a uh, generic uh, human interface device. And so basically anything you can type, <laughs> you can now inject through the uh, magnetic uh, head or card reader. So, and uh, that's one of the things too. It's like, oh, why not just hit the keys? Uh, yeah, there's some of these things that uh, literally like, you know, it's this long of a text string. Like, say for example, I'm going to be demoing a drive-by attack, because uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, point of sale systems are a little out of date sometimes. So, and I'm going to actually go through, um, yeah, some of these methods here in a second. And triggering events, like that's one of the things too. Like some of the newer ones, they have actual. Uh, uh, you can test if they're being USB fed. So that's something once they're powered on, you can still do some of it. But they have to wait for a trigger event or for the remote cable to be toggled. So. Uh, yeah. So basically, you can figure out when they're listening, and it's not something where you have to, you know, tap into it. You can literally just look and see if the green light's on. <laughs> so that's like one of the indicators of it. And uh, I would definitely, if you guys want to start playing with some of the stuff, get the MSR, uh, the little Mag Interpreter 103s. I think they're like 15 bucks. So they're really, really fun. And you can basically dump anything you want to into a notepad. And uh, yeah. So management keys. That was one of the the biggest things too, uh, where I was looking for a really hard challenge. <laughs> And the actual first point of sale system I bought, which uh, was pulled out of a taco restaurant, and it, when it was disbanded and it was auctioned, and uh, yeah, it came with a management key, and that management key worked on the other two point of sale systems that I bought from separate lots. <laughs> so I was like, ah, there's nothing, you know, nothing deep, you know, crazy, no techno, no chain smoking. It literally was just uh, pretty much the same admin account used across <laughs> several point of sale systems. So now uh, I'm guessing. Because uh, now you can't turn this off when you go out in, out in the wild. It's something where uh, I started noticing every single point of sale system, and I'm like, I wonder if you know that key would work on that. Key would work on that. And I actually, uh, one of my buddies owns a restaurant that happened to have one of those, and yeah, you can literally inject the uh, actual management key into it. So that's something that is pretty crazy. And like, you can mess with inventory. You can throw off inventory. You can, yeah, some of them need uh, o management overrides, you know, for some of the uh, electronic checkouts and stuff like that. So that's. Some scary stuff. <laughs> and yeah, here's pretty much uh, what you guys probably can't read. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you get, everybody knows how, uh, for the most part, how keyboards work. And I think we deal with them on a daily basis. So we pretty much know all the character sets. So quite literally, anything that you can type on that keyboard that I showed earlier, you can pretty much inject. Uh, like I said, sometimes you have to uh, strip some of the uh, uh, auto return characters, the enter characters. So. And yeah, one of the first attacks I did uh, was I saw the cash tend button or check 10 button. And that was uh, injecting, I was like, okay, I wonder how hard this could be. <laughs> so, you know, I started uh, playing around with it and I was getting into the F, F key functionalities and I was rolling through it and testing it. And this basically is like a way to like, uh, like for a bad guy to actually just walk in and literally rob a store. They could literally just put this device on there and that's what kind of made it scary. Like it's, you know, now people can rob stores that way. So with the F8 key, it's uh, pretty bad. Uh, and uh, yeah, behind every strong man is a strong woman. As you can see, I'm wearing my, I love my wife t-shirt, so. <laughs> and behind every uh, point of sale system, there's an outdated operating system, so. <laughs> and uh, not every point of sale system, I can't speak for them all, but uh, every single one that I bought, or I could afford, and that's <laughs> kind of the way it goes. Um, so basically what you're gonna do is you wanna exit out of the point of sale system, and uh, yeah. The next step will be popping a command shell and uh, injecting the payload. And what kind of payloads would one want to run on a point of sale system? Uh, I did a talk last year, so I had uh, a couple mal uh, memory scripting malware laying around. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I will see if I can uh, load these on a page. So it, it's going to do one distribution, and I uh, tested it this morning. So it's actually going to do a drive by attack on an actual web server that I have uh, loaded. So, and this is a, it's a neutered version of it, it uh, just talks to itself. So it's not going to actually be doing anything illegal. And it's just going to literally visit the web page and uh, has a vulnerable version of, of uh, some software running on it. And then also, you can literally, uh, t through the command shell, because most of them run uh, uh, deprecated operating systems, some of them sell functionalities that where you could literally just put URLs and uh, d download from pretty much any source you wanted. So, yeah, like I was saying, uh, this is the payload that the bad guys would use, um, like the actual memory scripting malware. So. Uh, in the past, you know, people had to do these ridiculous supply chain attacks or they had to, you know, breach a vendor account. And now it's literally, uh, 
you know, the bad guys, it would be as easy as walking up to one of those point of sale systems and actually infecting it. So, and yeah, and some of them are dev environments. So, like, they're uh, custom. They have, um, yeah, but they pretty much have their proprietary key functions. They don't have a classic layout, but they still have magnetic card readers in them. And I actually, uh, you know, was expecting to have to, you know, map these keys out and do all this crazy stuff, but uh, they actually, uh, <laughs> If they have the generic driver loaded, they will accept the same key, key commands, even if they don't have the keys on the keyboard. So that was like another huge fail. So, <laughs> but yeah, as far as limitations of mag injection, uh, making a physical card attack limitation, uh, well, could you make the waiter do the dirty work? Could you like give him your credit card to pay and actually have him walk up and do some of that? That's something that was kind of my, you know, next step after all this was kind of finished up. And uh, yeah, that's. Um, some, like I was saying, there are some illegal characters that you can't actually encode onto it, so it wouldn't work as good, but I think that um, it's something that some people have explored in the past, and it's uh, definitely something I will be, once I have some free time now that, you know, all the talk and conference seasons are done with, I'll do some more checking into stuff soon. But yeah, that was kind of the one thing too, it's like, you know, how much of a payload could you actually put on a credit card, so, on track three. And uh, yeah, these devices are everywhere. This was literally me, me flying to Huntsville uh, when I was speaking at uh, Takedown Con, and yeah, these mag strip readers are everywhere, like quite literally everywhere. And uh, one of these, uh, one of the other things that I started looking at, I was like, okay, uh, aside from being able to, you know, just pop the register, installing malware, that's not bad enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, actually attacking player rewards uh, systems. Like say for example, the, who's ever played slot machines and like you just kind of were bored and just wanted to go back to your hotel room, so you're gonna go play the $20 slots or the, you know, $50 slot and just get it done with? That's one of the things like, uh, Every, thing, every time I went to those higher end uh, slot machines, people would always leave a card in there. And I thought it was by accident at first. Like, I'm like, hey, this person probably left their card there and I tried to turn it in. And they're like, no, the, the people do that because they try to squat points. Because uh, some guy who is just literally, you know, waiting for a plane or something is going to, you know, play $2,500 with the slots and they get to collect the player's rewards points. So they kind of squat some of those accounts. And uh, that was like one of the attack methods that I was thinking of. It's like, now that you can eject magnetic data, uh, it's like you can, you can squat on one of these devices and it's, another one is like I was saying, uh, uh, I think when I was in high, s high school I worked at an uh, uh, actual company that uh, they had a, like a player's reward program and they, t they told me they're like, yeah, you can't use your own card. People have been fired in the past for that. So it's something where they're onto it and uh, they'll actually have flags go off if more, the, c the same cards are used more than once in, you know, X amount of time. Uh, but some of the actual, uh, like, grocery store chains or there's uh, certain electronics companies where, you know, every $500 you spend, you get five bucks or a hundred bucks. So this is one of those other methods, like, uh, some of the rewards programs would actually be susceptible to this kind of attack. So, and like I was saying, that one of the refunds, like, where you can actually refund onto a prepaid card, that should not be <laughs> possible to happen, especially, you know, if it wasn't the original transaction. So, and sometimes it has to post overnight, but that was, like, one of my additional attack vectors. I didn't have time to we know all the kinks on it, but it's, it's something that uh, seemed feasible, so. And yeah, and injecting into actual, uh, like what I was saying, when you can actually tap into the remote signal, uh, as long as you hit the right wire, uh, you basically could <laughs> overfill like prepaid cards like that, stuff like that, so. So if a bad guy wanted to get an unlimited phone calling card, he could be injecting his own card and having time added to it, so. And uh, not only that, but some of the, you know, gift store cards, stuff like that. So, and uh, some of them do lock once they have the original amount loaded on them so they're not reusable. But the reusable prepaid cards that say reusable prepaid cards on them, you know, <laughs> those are the ones that obviously they would attack after, so. And yeah, uh, like I was saying, um, these actually triggered events, attacks, uh, so you have to sniff out the actual uh, powered up readers. Like some, a lot of the modern ones, they don't actually, they send a remote signal that here there's a transaction going on or hey, we're gonna t do some kind of interaction. And I don't know if that's because of this kind of attack or if it's just because, uh, you know, they kind of uh, looked into the future of what people might actually be doing at these and it's not a good idea to have something uh, not only powered on, some of these things are low energy. So yeah, it's something where you can actually, uh, for some of the rewards programs also, you have to hit the enter key to accept that it's your account. So yeah, that's one of the things too, I was wondering if, you know, if it'd be possible to actually inject that, so. And it, uh, on the actual point of sale system that I tried on that, it worked perfectly. Because that's one of the biggest things is uh, there were customers always stealing people's, uh, you know, points. Uh, say somebody didn't have a rewards card, they were actually letting them inject it, so. Yeah, and uh, who's ever used a clock-in system? <laughs> yeah, who, uh, you can never be late to work again now, so. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the, uh, 
uh, as far as the hardware goes, I bought like a hotel key for the back door. I bought a couple keyboards. I bought a couple point of sale systems. Um, and I bought a clock in system. And uh, a lot of people are going to the fingerprints or some of the actual newer method ones. So, but yeah, this is one of my last attack surfaces that I actually looked at. So, and yeah, I'm going to go over the uh, video of the brute forcing. Uh, it was on, uh, <laughs> there's a couple times when Windows uh, stuff popped up while I was actually doing the demo, like when I did the video. So uh, there was actual Windows 10 upgrades because it was like a fresh install. So I was, uh, I lost my original driver disk for my uh, MSR 605, and I had to download it from an untrusted web page. So if you guys wonder what the dialog box is popping up all the time are. So, and I'm also going to go into the uh, installing actual credit card skimming malware off of a web server as long as the internet is still working. So, and if not, uh, you'll still be able to see that there are injections. So, and I'm going to go set up the demo. And while I'm setting up the demo, I'm actually going to, if people want to step up, start setting up to the mics too, uh, you can ask questions while I'm doing the demos. So, yeah, thanks for coming and stay legal. And I'm uh, going to go into the demonstration portion right now. So, Let's see. Thank you. <laughs> Have you messed with any of this on uh, airplane mag readers on the back of seats? Did you uh, mention uh, if I messed up with them on airplanes? On the back of seats, you know how they have the mag readers to like. Yeah, yeah I've, uh, I've learned from other people that have messed around on planes that it's, uh, <laughs> it's not usually a, uh, one of the things you guys want to do. Like uh, some of the, I saw that mag strip reader and I even felt bad like taking a picture, you know, of an MSR that was on the keyboard thing. So yeah, I haven't tampered with planes any. <laughs> And I hope everybody knows that, because yeah, that was like one of the I see I've saw I've seen those and I thought the exact because you can't once you start doing this kind of stuff you can't like turn that stuff off. So, yeah. How about the uh, like the new like Square and the PayPal and all? Oh yeah, these? yeah. The uh, some of the I had a, some of the original and right now it's actually and uh, I'll come back to your question. Uh, some of the Square readers and some of the remote ones. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the and that's not a vulnerability in them. It's anything that uses a mag strip. But yeah, quite literally everything that is affordable that has a mag strip in it. I've bought and injected stuff into. So, so yeah, yeah, that's pretty, pretty crazy. And that's what I'm saying, like, if you're making your own payments, you could be, you know, presenting a different card. I, I see where you're thinking. That's some clever thinking, so. But uh, basically right now, it's actually injecting the, f the folio numbers, and I'll roll the video back here a little bit. And there's the first Windows 10 upgrade. Sorry about that. And if you guys want, this video is online on uh, YouTube already, so. And so basically I'm going to read the raw data because it has, like I said, it has uh, custom encoding. So you have to have a specific reader to actually do the, and uh, you're going to be reading the, you have to switch it to high code and then read raw. So yeah, there's the first transaction and then it's actually, you can, if you can't see on the actual video it'll show because my phone wouldn't focus, but it's actually, uh, some of the numbers are changing because it's rolling through the actual folio revisions. They have the same checkout date. So it's like the end of the conference is happening or something. So everybody, I knew that they were checking out at that date. And uh, it literally took about like six minutes. But it, if you guys want to see how the actual device was over my MSR 605, it was actually injecting folio data. And then uh, I think the end of this, I'm going to let rule again here for you guys. So. And then after this, I actually used a Chinese made MP3 player to inject a credit card number, which is kind of cool. And it burns the MP3 player out, so don't try it at home. So, <laughs> but yeah, what's your question? Um, did you ever uh, try using the mag spoofer as a jammer to perhaps like jam an, uh, a transaction that's in place and then play after it's done, anything like that? Yeah, that was actually, uh, oh, sorry. When people ask me, like, how do you protect against this kind of stuff? And that, that's kind of the exact same thing is you can put one of the mag spoofers injecting random data on the back of your door, and it'll actually de authenticate anybody from, uh, from actually using it. So, like, it would be a really good defense mechanism. And you could have, like, a two form authentication, have it when your Bluetooth phone comes in, it'll actually shut off the jammer. So you can add two-form authentication. And it might actually drain the batteries, so you'll get locked out of your room if they don't have it hardwired, though. So, <laughs> so you might actually DDoS yourself out of your own room. But yeah, What's your question? Uh, so how might someone defend from one of these attacks? Uh, like I was saying, the, uh, um, updating to the latest versions of the mag surfaders and the actual uh, point-of-sale systems, uh, that would be my recommendations, uh, where they send remote coding. Because a shut-off mag reader is the one that is not responsive to this kind of attack. So. That would be my biggest recommendation is uh, get update to something that's USB 3.0 and uh, push the latest versions of the actual point of sale systems. So, yeah, and 
Yes, what's your question? So I've seen, I've seen something that says you can go around the chip and pin cards by reactivating the mag strip. Yeah. Uh, how does that work? Uh, yeah. Uh, Sam McCamcar did a really good job of explaining how mag spoofer can actually modify some of the flag details on the actual uh, magnetic card readers. Uh -huh. uh, he didn't release it in his code because he's the same way I am. I don't want people to use these for illegal purposes. But you can actually uh, tell, you can basically send the command that, hey, the pin's damaged on this, let me just use my mag card. Uh, some of the mag spoofers, they're modified. Like this one has uh, two payloads on it. And uh, I have, like I said, I had the six mag spoofers in one was my actual uh, Big Bertha, which is like a huge magnetic coil. And I uh, let press take a bunch of pictures of it. But that's like my brute forcing one. And that thing took me like six hours to build. Hmm. <laughs> so I didn't want it to break, but yeah. This one's basically a modified version of the uh, mag spoofer here. And I'm gonna actually, how much time do we got for demo? We're doing really good? Okay. If you wanna ask some more questions too. Did you write any fuzzers for any of the embedded systems hooked up to these make swipe readers, and did you find any memory corruption issues? <laughs> yeah, that was actually my next, uh, I was kind of, kind of thinking some, something along the same lines, but I uh, literally ran out of time because I got kind of obsessed with my ATM attacks that I was doing and some of the uh, actual relaying portions and stuff, so I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna get, get the actual mag strip demo kicked off. If anybody has any questions at all, uh, feel free to come up to the podium, so. So can everybody see the point of sale system? Two on the screens? Awesome. Here we go. And I'm gonna check to see if I have internet connectivity here. <laughs> Here we go, one second. And it is not visiting the right page, so I have to, I'm gonna try the second payload, I'm gonna try to pop the command right now, so. If anybody has any questions, I can answer these while I'm doing this, so. <laughs> hey, Weston. Yeah. Obviously, Sammy's done a lot of research in this area also. Have you, have you done anything with, with uh, BLE using, like, the coin to rewrite or done any track uh, research on how coin rewrites the data or any of the plastic? Uh, no. No, I haven't, actually. Using it, that as an attack, attack method? Oh, no. No, I have. I was looking into some of the other research that Sammy had done and then. Like I said, I, I did shift uh, 
about halfway through this, because this was done like very, very early in the year. Right. And yeah, that was something that uh, I thought some of the stuff that Sammy was doing is amazing, and I was wanting to read some more of his research. So. Okay. But yeah, cool. no, I didn't look into some of that, but I did uh, get some of the NFC working, but I burned my original uh, HTC phones, uh, near field communication out, trying to do stuff with it. Oh, so. the radios out? Yeah. What's up? You burned the radios out on it? Yeah, burned the radios out on it. So, so that was like the end of it, because I like, just broke a $600 phone, so. <laughs> that ended my curiosity pretty quick, so. Cool, thanks. Just one more second, I'm gonna try to unplug in the head. I know it's a very different approach, <coughs> but uh, do you have any interest in looking into NFC and other technologies that hotels are now using? Because a lot of hotels are phasing out the mag strips. Yeah, those are um, most of the ones that use the RFID ones are actually tokenized. So they reflect the folio number instead of having uh, actual data in there. So you could use some of the classic attack methods, but it wouldn't actually, uh, wouldn't actually work so as good. And that's what I'm saying. If you're root posting those, like that's something where uh, your key space would be a lot bigger and like you're able to, it's a truly random 16 digit number. So. Same page. Well, I apologize. The demo blew up on me, but I will put a YouTube video up uh, of it actually working. And if you guys want to come in, uh, I'm going to try to demo it here until I actually get kicked off stage. But I'll still answer any questions. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask too. So yeah, I was yeah. just curious. Have you done any uh, playing around with the new tabletop devices that are in the restaurants and stuff? Have you oh, yeah. looked at any of those? <laughs> yeah. That, every time I sit at uh, one of my favorite restaurants down the street, that's like my first thing that I would love to. But I don't have access to them. I think it would be kind of breaking the law, but I would love to actually order some of those. Right. I've seen a lot of fun things people do with the, some of the pager systems and stuff, so. Nice. Yeah. So a bit of a comment on uh, running on old operating systems. I ran a, um, around with a, uh, a war driver downtown and I found a lot of uh, uh, web Wi-Fi and I went into the, the, the restaurants that were using that and asked permission, of course, because we all ask permission. and. Um, Got the handshake from WEP real quick, you know, with Wi-Fi and did some sniffing, found out they're all running old XP, 0867 gets to it, old uh, POS on there, uh, dump memory, and I found even on there an uh, admin account with backdoor, backdoor, so yeah. I wasn't the first one there, but I found that they provided WPA2 to the customers, but because the, the uh, old point of sale couldn't authenticate and the old XP couldn't authenticate to WPA2, they even run on WEP, and so you don't have to get very close at all. I want to know if, if that's been your experience or not as well. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, for as far as actual using uh, third third party inputs on this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, like, don't you have to get that close to it? That if, if they're already networked with with WEP, then you know, oh, yeah. it, it goes in there. But yeah, all that default cred in, in old uh, OS, uh, I've seen the same thing. Yes. Yeah, there's tons of other ways that I can see people actually attacking these. Yeah, this is like my, my main attack surface on this. So. So shifting gears a little from mag strips to chip readers, have you ever gone into something like that as chip readers start to get more and more popular and maybe hotels start to use that instead of mag strips? Do you think this attack vectors that you have kind of really researched might be able to shift and transition into the same way you could, you could apply it to chip readers? Yeah, some of the chip readers, uh, they'll still be using some of the like, uh, magnetic track data for mm -hmm. the most part on some, some of the stuff, but. Uh, some of the challenging and the encryption they can do, I would see it being able to block a lot of it, so. Okay. 
What about uh, looking into the serial programming on the actual door itself? Oh, the, I, yeah, I haven't dug too deep into some of that stuff. Like, uh, after I got some of this attack surface and then I broke my phone, like I said, it kind of disheartened a little bit. So. But yeah, that was like, uh, I, I, was, I was still curious about a lot of the attack surface that was out there, but I just, yeah, I didn't have the, some of the stuff to, to get into it. So right. as far as, especially time was my biggest constraint on that. Because if you have a key to your door, and you're able to reprogram the lock to your door, or you could spoof your key. Yeah. Then you. Well, yeah. That's the, the biggest thing too. Is like, uh, are you asking about if you can? I'm sorry, I might ask no, the question. So a lot of the doors have a like a barrel serial connector on the bottom, a 2.1 jack. Oh yeah, yeah. And then if you can reprogram that door over serial, and if this is the kind of security that the keys are using, are the locks really using that kind of security? And that's what I'm saying. Like even the the, the most recent hotel attack. Like where they had the little, uh, bing, or the, not the bingo dauber, but the actual marker. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, those are newer systems. Those have two-way interfacing, so they can blow the keys away. Uh, so a lot of these low-energy old ones, or older ones, like as old as in like 2008, 2006, those ones uh, have two-way two functionality, but it's in 15-minute increments. So some of the full-blown ones, uh, they're, they're got a little bit different method of actually you know, protecting themselves. So yeah, thank you. Did you have to use any kind of a proprietary um, reader for your MEG strips? I noticed a lot of like, credit cards, driver's licenses, all used a normal standard one, two, three tracks. But a lot of hotels aren't readable by those standard readers. Did you have to use anything special for that? Or? I did have to modify the MSR like a little bit to be able to read some of the raw data at the same time as the uh, other information. Because they use like, a portion of the card and uh, actually raw read it. Uh, you do, to read their proprietary format, you do need an actual driver from the property management software. But if you can rip the raw encoding, like a, a majority of them, you can actually reverse it from the raw encoding. It just takes a lot of extra time. If you do the, the raw read through the property management software, if you were to get the property management software, you would be reading entirely different character sets. So, right, so that's how you did it for most of what you're showing here was it wasn't to dump it to actual keys, but to dump it to raw and then encode Dumping to raw, then I had to re-encode it as raw. Like if you went up to your room and did MSR and just read it in raw, and then copied that to another card, that raw would work across the board. So, all right, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Just curious if you looked into uh, trying to do SQL injection into like POS systems or other systems yeah. using this method. Yeah, I was actually, the demo that I had was literally going to do a, uh, a, a Java or a Flash drive by attack. So, I, and there, as far as SQL injections, that's something that would definitely be possible, uh, especially for some, yeah, quite literally, if it would be able to get to something that's back end or internal. That would be a huge attack surface, so, yeah. Thanks. Uh, some of the card readers that are slide-ins either have a mechanical or an optical sensor. Does, how does that, is that just an ASCII slot machines? character? Like yeah. the slot machine ones, yeah. They actually go, turn green once something's inserted into them, and you can use a very low profile piece of 70 pound paper, and it'll actually trigger that event, so. We're doing on time, guys. <laughs> my goo and over oh, two minutes. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Any last questions? I really do apologize for this. I'm gonna try to get a demo going in the hallway. I guess it. I need to check on some of the connectivity issues. Uh, it should, should have still popped the command shell and injected though. So I'm having some kind of interface issues. So if anybody wants to see this, if not, I will actually put a uh, camera demo online. So and I'll make sure that my camera focuses this time, but if you guys want to look into the actual injection with the M Chinese MP3 player, if you want to burn out a $6 MP3 player injecting credit cards, you can feel free to. Uh, then also, a lot of the uh, actual payload injections, I'll be putting uh, demos up online, so quite literally, as soon as I get back to North Dakota, which I have to drive, so. But yeah, if there's no other questions, I just want to thank you guys for uh, staying. Thank you.